there in the front part of the church, of the parish church of Our Lady of Consolation. And for the first time in my life, I realized here is an uncle, part of Philippine history, and yet it is kept in a museum and seen only by the public very sparingly and the personal experience proves it. And so the following year, I put the image of our lady, a picture I took with my own camera as part of the calendar of Ephesus. Ephesus ministry is my special ministry apart from teaching. We have the care and the support for the retired and sick Filipino priests. And we have our own calendar and we have started to reproduce the images of our Blessed Mother so dear to us Filipinos from the earliest time. And so, Blessed Senor de la Salud became part of it. And I started to write a couple of articles. And eventually, in my book that uh, just this month, won the best book in theology in a Catholic book awards under the auspices of Jaime Cardinal Sin. I place in this book that wish when uh, I said that uh, the exact wordings that where is that? What was once a very popular Marian icon in old Manila is waiting to be reintroduced to Filipinos. And I am so happy that the Recoletos have uh, been doing that precisely. So you have Father Romain coming up with a book on the technical details of the events and now this symposium. So allow me to begin by expressing my personal gratitude to my colleague here, the Recollect Fathers. Uh, by the way, Father Tisena was my classmate in high school. <laughs> That's why I feel very much at home here teaching with them because uh, with Father Bunyao and Father Tisena, it is the old paths in San Jose Seminary before. So now let us go to our topic. By the way, this book I have brought with me uh, to offer it to you. It is outside on the table with my two other recent books, the one on the Eucharist and the other one, Itanong Ken Monsi. For those of you who would like to study more in Mariology in the Philippines and uh, on the Eucharist or some other questions of our faith, I just thought that this symposium will have a little more uh, extra flavor if you are offered that this is a beginning and for everyone the pursuit of patterns of going deeper into the subject is always a very exciting adventure. Our topic is about the devotion to Mary, the mother of Jesus, who is our mother as well. And uh, we know very well, this is a massive devotion, massive in the sense of volume, quantity. Although sometimes we look for more quality in the admission that the popular piety pertaining to Mary will always be. That is simply Mary's way of coming to us. But under a very specific title, did Mary hear that we will have a lot of epidemics and illnesses and that there will be many Filipinos who cannot afford hospitalization? 
to buy medicine and that therefore she better come here under the title of the La Salud to be precisely a healing mother her healing love accompanying us in our moments of illness but before she came here in 1634 eight years before Nuestra Señora de la Paz y Buen Viaje arrived. Do you know that? That in 1626, another Morenita, I, I noticed that the recollectors refer to Mary as the Black Virgin. Okay. The title Black. Morenita, that is a title every year given to Our Lady of Antipolo. So, and the title of black does not belong to Mary. It belongs to the sun. Another image brought by the Recoletos here in uh, the Philippines, the black Nazarene. And do you know the common denominator? They all come from Mexico. And it is not because they were burned. No, that's one of those legends that should not be repeated. The Mexicans simply use mestice. It's a particular type of tree whose outer part are light in color, but like our kabagong, uh, the inner part of it is always black. And that is what they do. In appearance, it's almost like our Philippine Kamachili. It's usually twisted, living and growing and prospering out in the arid desert. The wood is not so tough, but neither is it so soft. By the way, Monsignor, why are you going to that? I went to Mexico to study that in particular because uh, I was wondering why is Our Lady of Antipolo so dark? Sunburn? <laughs> no lotion? <laughs> Never used? <laughs> Never used the necessary lotion? And then I, I was struck by the necessary of the last look. And sure enough, I, in Mexico, I discovered that uh, they had a whole series of, uh, of uh, statues of the same hue, precisely because of the wood they use. Okay, now, this maternity of Mary, that is what we are experiencing in her apparitions. Mary will be appearing to us. Mary makes an appearance that is what I call the normal appearances of Mary are the iconic appearances, the images. And so, Nuestra Señora de la Salud, Nuestra Señora de la Paz y Buen Viaje in Antipodo, or uh, Our Lady of Mount Carmel, whatever, these are appearances, iconic. The pictures, the images are Mary's way of being with us. And that is intentional. Wherever you go, it is amazing, my dear brothers and sisters, if you study Christian iconography, by the third century, some of the earliest images of Mary, whether in the catacombs of Rome, or whether it is in the Sinai Peninsula, where you have in St. Catherine's uh, Monastery, some ancient images, it is Mary as mother, always with child. That is the original image of Mary. That is the original description of the Bible. Mary with the child Jesus. Mary's motherhood. And it is from there that Mary's meaning and significance for the rest of the church until the end of history is again Mary as mother. And that is what St. John, St. John, 
perpetuates and eternalized by presenting Jesus giving Mary the title of mother vis-a-vis -vis to the disciples and to the rest of us. Now, it is this uh, the book, like now the replicas, available. I do not see how come they do not even as <laughs> I mean, How come they do not start to call lady here? <laughs> For say there must be one year. That's exactly my point. <laughs> Mary is not for exhibit walls. <laughs> Mary is not a museum piece. Mary must be with us where we are. Okay? So, excuse me, Mama Mary. See <laughs> old men. Okay, now. Okay, now. Okay, now. Okay, now. But my point is this, this has been long coming. I personally feel very fulfilled because I personally push for it and publicly, even without any talking, discussing things with my brother Coletos, I did it, I, I kept writing and mentioning it, and it is out there in, uh, in my book. But now, you are here. You are involved. You are now more responsible. Mary now must come alive, not only in the reappearance of the image, because that is what we have done so far, only for the image to reappear, although she is not here on the stage. <laughs> Mary must reappear in our hearts. That is where we are at now. In our particular devotion to her, as the mother caring for her sick children, sickness is something that is our commonality. Some people say there are things you must fear, like death or taxes or sickness. No, for us as believers, sickness is an opportunity. We all become sick because we all need such opportunities to get things straight, to do finally the things that must be done, to clear up our, our heads. It is sickness that must be turned into a moment of grace. And Mary, specifically, has come to our shore under the title of the Lassalud, as if knowing how many Filipinos will be like anywhere else, be in their sickness, times of illness, in need of care. And that is now what comes next. Actually, in my class in Mariology here, I've asked where is the original Nubina prayers in Intramuros during the Spanish period. I heard a classmate of mine, the departed Pastor Paloma, he was also my classmate. Uh, but the Lord called the good ones away. But I descended myself and it came around. We are the bad grass. Ala Eva, ala The Lord wants us around a little longer. But uh, si Pastor, nasa langit na yan. But anyway, I heard he sort of re-edited it. We need to come out with a modern version of the Novena prayers, okay? Because the image must have, so to say, its accompanying verbalization. A vision, an image, must be accompanied by words, and the prayers are the words. Words of 
prayers and supplications that will delineate to us her intention, her presence, her accompaniment. So that is needed, and uh, I'm sure Father uh, Kiladan will explain to you, Father, the history, and uh, uh, later.